Okay, reflection time. Uh, apologies for the appearance. I've been home literally, well, a couple of hours. Um, after uh, a fl overnight flight, uh, an eight hour overnight flight, and then a bus journey, a uh, four hour bus journey. Probably not a lot to some Americans, but it is, it is to me. Uh, to, to, to Brits, that's a lot. That's basically the UK. Um, I've slept, so I've had time to reflect. I just want to sort of reflect back on MAGFest because it was my first convention ever. I've never ever been to a convention. It was my first time meeting anybody from the site. Well, that's a lie. I've met Mike J. Um, anybody not British from the site. Um, French, Canadian, American, you know, fans. <laughs> meeting the fans. And just taking it in, just taking it in, it's just like, oh, you know, arriving at, arriving at the airport, and I'm just like, not the airport, arriving at the hotel, and it was such a wonderful thing. I didn't get any of this, sadly, on tape. Um, I just didn't have my camera on me a lot of the time, which is a shame. I took it with me for that. Uh, I, mean, I, arrived at the, I arrived at the hotel, and... Wario and Sean and, uh, uh, were there, uh, uh, and Stephanie Gooch, who, who a lot of guys might know as Overactor, who I, was, I just love. And it's just the first thing, you know, I see Steph and I just show her name, Gooch, because I, I do that, I do that. And then Justin just gives me this bear hug, and it's just like, man, <laughs> is this for real? You know, just, he's such a nice guy, he is such a nice guy. You know, there's no... I mean, everybody, I mean, oh, this, this is going to sound so cliche, but everybody is so nice. There's not one person there who you do, would not want to spend so much time with. There's, you know, there's quiet people, but they're still funny, you know. I mean, Phelous, people were saying how quiet he was, but I was rooming with the guy, and God, he's funny. Especially if he's got alcohol in him, in case, which, because he's very funny, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be pictures of that online pretty soon. But... <sighs> I met Justin, I met Sean, and it was just, you know, and then we walked inside and Punky was there, and she just, she ran over to us and she hugged everybody, and it was just like, oh, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. It was amazing to see these people. And I'd been in contact with Call Guy pretty much through the whole day. I'd met at the airport, Sad Panda, Phelous, and Chaos D1 John. Um, we'd agreed to meet at the airport. I was, my flight was delayed an hour taking off, so they stuck around and waited for me a lot longer than they needed to. Um, and I'm pretty sure the announcements were driving them insane, because I, 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 when I was leaving at DC, I was walking up and down talking to my friend Kira on the phone, and the announcements were driving me up the bloody wall. I mean, how many times could you have a final boarding announcement? Just like they, they seem to announce the flight for Boston. This is the final call for Boston. They seem to announce it 20 times. It's just like, all right, you've announced it. Just go. Oh, no, yeah, I'm getting off topic. Now. But yeah, they had to sit through that for like three hours waiting for me to eventually land, check in. Obviously, the check-in line is huge because I've got a UK passport. I don't have an American passport, so it takes a lot longer. They were great for me for that. Pretty much the only reason they stuck around though is that the room was in my name, so that's the only reason they stuck around. They weren't doing that courtesy or anything like that, no, no. But, um, I'm, you know, I met the guys. Phelous is so damn tall. Shocked the hell out of me. Panda was smiling, which scared me. Uh, John is just so sarcastically deadpan, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, and I just, uh, you know, through the day then just meeting the guys, like, uh, we went up to the room to check in. And I said to Koga, you know, we're there. Koga came down and it was like, you know, I'd worked with this guy for two years, finally getting to meet him. And then we bumped into Kaylin. She came downstairs and it was just like, you know, and then Jason, and Jason said, I think the first thing Jason actually said to me was, I want to fuck your throat or something like that, which is just like, I love the guy. The man is awesome! Who says that to somebody they've just met? I've never really spoken to Jason online. The guy is awesome. And so damn funny! Ah, oh, man, so damn funny. I have not laughed so much in a week than I did this this whole week. My big problem I had myself, this is, this is my own fault, this is my own fault. I've travelled, and I've done the whole thing where you adapt to the time zone. But I didn't do it this time, because I was only going to be there for, I was, I was there for less than a week. 
and I didn't want to do the adapting to the time zone thing because it, 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 I knew it would screw me up when I came back and I do regret that because I missed out on a lot of stuff like I'd fall asleep early and I'd be up early so I'd be up when uh, there'd be nobody else up and I'd fall asleep when nobody else was asleep and I do, I do regret that because I missed out on a lot of cool stuff uh, that's, that's probably my only regret, and again, it's completely my fault. It's not me; it wasn't me being antisocial. It's just that I, I know what it's like to have your clock screwed up to the point where, because I come back, I go straight back to work, and I, I didn't want to, to. I didn't want to suffer through that because I've done it before, and it's killer. Um, and plus, I want to make more. I've got videos to make. I've got uh, the vlog, which I'm obviously doing this, but I'm going to put that together. Uh, I've got a panic Q&A to do, I've got uh, my problem with to do, I've got a top 10 to do, so I've got a lot of stuff to do and I, I didn't want to have to readjust myself to that, I wanted to be alert for it. But, um, who else? Yeah, so we were, we were downstairs in the lobby and you had, uh, Jason came down there and there was a great picture of us, a, a panel sort of setting that uh, Punky took. And then a great picture of me and Punky, which is going to be on Facebook, because we're the Dugs. I'm the YouTube Doug, she's the Twitter Doug. Then uh, we saw Lupa and uh, Paul Hack, Matt. I saw them going into the lift, and Lupa looked so white, because she just looked so tired. And because her hair was very red as well, it just made her face look whiter. <laughs> So, um, that was, and then she, she, they came back down, and uh, it was just great seeing seeing her. Um, I knew that uh, Nella was coming uh, later the next day, uh, Roses and Paul coming the next day, Chris Larios was coming the next day, uh, Spoonie and Scarlet were coming uh, the next day. So just, at that point, the convention hadn't started, there was no registry, there was no Lord's Money Games. It was just primarily a little, you know, the small little group of Channel Awesome guys. Nash was there. Uh, Nash. Nash is. If you ever, it's, you see sometimes when you watch a video and there's a there's a person who is. It's a reflection of it. It's not actually the person who's doing it. It's like if you see if you see the nostalgia critic doing his videos, that's not Doug. That that's the character the nostalgia critic. Doug Walker is nothing like the nostalgia critic. Nash is Nash. What you see in his videos is what you get, and the guy is so so funny. He is so so funny, and he's so oh well, I think passionate and emotional is probably the best way to describe him because he's loud, but he's funny loud. It's just that we um, you'll, you you've obviously seen the vlog now. You've seen the vlog of it, um, but he uh, <laughs> he uh, he was he, his his reactions to this. I can't even remember the name of the show. It was Jason's DVD, which he lost sadly. Um, but his reactions to that were were just were just great. And then he turned around and screamed at me for actually recording the sh recording him watching the show, uh, which was very again done, you know. Done with love, I think is the best way to say it, because he was generally outraged at this this show, and I have no idea what the show is, or what it's trying to be. But, I mean, that was the first night, and it was just, you know, everybody together, having fun, having a laugh, having a great time. And then the next day, uh, Chris Larius arrived, roll of tea, and I walked into the room, and I just said, There's a Welshman in my room! And it was Chris. And, uh... I think we tried to outgay each other uh, to the point where we were this close to actually kissing and then I nearly lick, lick, licked his nipples, so I think I won that. Sorry Chris, I think I won that. Um, I would not be able to outgay Ben's either, I'm pretty sure of that. Although Bennett did snog him, so uh, I think Bennett wins that one. Yeah, it's a shame that Bennett couldn't be there, it's a shame of that. And when Nella arrived, um, that was great, that was, oh that was great. Nella is so funny and just insanely ins it just she's just mad she's just mad but so funny and then I saw Paul and straight away he just acknowledged me said hi well she handshake hug really nice guy uh, Rosie Sarah pushing up roses again acknowledged me before I didn't have a chance to say anything and introduced me to Todd in the shadows who was my oh, my my other roommate I was it was me my, it was myself it was Sad Panda it was Phyllis and it was Todd and 
I did not know what he looked like, so it was just it was just weird seeing Todd out of the shadows for the first time. Fair dues to the guy. He made he, tr he as, as much as possible. He tried to maintain the shadow monarchy by wearing a, a, a mask. But um, I think it uh, bothered him a lot to wear it because it was hot down there. I mean, I just loved playing the video games. It was just great to play video games and great to play arcade games without having to put money in. The only thing I regret is they didn't have they had the X-Men arcade game there, the full six player arcade game. They didn't have the Simpsons or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, which was a shame. I'd have liked that to have been there. It would have been great fun to have those there. But I mean you can't complain. Uh, just press go and you're playing an arcade game, no no pennies, no coins, no nothing. No. And then when uh Vincara arrives, I mean Lewis was uh the guy is so friendly. He's so friendly. It's just there's not one person there who wasn't friendly or wasn't approachable. Who just it all. Lewis is just so so friendly, and this is this is going to sound so dull and so sort of cliche to say all this stuff. It's like uh, you know, oh, he was so nice, he was so nice. But everyone generally was. It's like I was walking up the stairs and I just heard Lewis shout, "Paul!" I think I was coming up the stairs with Paul, and Lewis was queuing for his pass uh, with with Liz. And he just said, uh, Paul! And we all turned around and he was there and he, he, you know, basically waved everybody over and he saw Punky and he knew who Punky was and he gave her a huge hug and he looked at me and I held up my pass because I'd written on it where she met. And he just went, I know who you are! And he gave me a huge hug as well. And it was just, oh man. <laughs> well, we got into a lot of conversations about Doctor Who and he showed us his uh, Atop the Fourth Wall, the one that's gone up just recently. Um, really proud of that as well. And then Spoonie, uh, which which shocked me the most because I came downstairs and Spoonie was over in the corner. He did, he just arrived. He checked in with Scarlet. They were on my floor. Um, Scarlet, who was just beautiful and so so tall. And this woman is an Amazon and just uh, very hot. I stroked her pussy ears. She enjoyed it. And then at the end of the uh, first night, uh, just just. Briefly meeting Jester because at that point I was so tired I I'd not really slept at all. Um, so at the end of that first night, just briefly meeting Jester and again, just, uh, sorry, Hope uh, Jessu Otaku, and again, just you know, she was so happy, she was just full of smiles and it was just great seeing Jessu and didn't really get a chance. This, this, this is a shame because I didn't really get a chance to speak to a lot of people um, based on where I was and what I was doing and just. The crowds, everyone sort of moved, and we all didn't stick together as one big group. It would have been, been impossible for us to do that because there were so many of us. And it was easy, obviously, for me to see uh, Panda, Phelous, John, and uh, Critical Marine because we were bunched together, sort of thing. John was with us the first night, then he was with Critical, so Critical was with John a lot, that sort of thing. But Spoonie, um, so you've seen Spoonie, I just have to change the uh, tape, that's why I was going to cut there. But, uh, as I said, when I saw Spoonie, um, I walked towards the group, sort of, not specific... I was going to say hi to Spoonie, but it wasn't, I wasn't going to the group to just single Spoonie out, because I kind of figured he was going to get that. He didn't really have to put up with it. And he looked up and went, uh, you know, hi. And I think just sort of autom automatically, you know, he sees someone walking towards him. He's, everyone's going to know Spoonie at this convention, so he just said hi. And then he, he looked at me... And went well, she, and I was very taken aback that he even, you know, knew me sort of like that. It was it was a nice surprise there. And I tried to play it off like because he had originally said hi, and then then recognised me. I tried to sort of play it off like uh, I was going to be this arrogant, pompous idiot who was like, you know, don't you know who I am? But I couldn't do that. Uh, yes, I, I was. I, I went into it half-heartedly because I kind of figured Spoonie would be tired because of the the traveling, and uh, it that did that didn't work at all. And it was just like a really awkward for me. It felt an awkward introduction to Spoonie. But, I mean, Spoonie was just he's such a nice guy. He just, he just brushed it right off. Because then the next day we bumped into each other and uh, had a chat in his room about wrestling because he was he done the Botchamania panel with with Sh with uh, Sean and Matthew, who I did not meet. There's one person not with Channel Awesome who I wanted to meet was Ma uh, uh, Botchamania Matthew. I'll just call him Matthew. Um, I did not meet him. It's a shame because every... I think everybody else met him. Everybody else met him. And I've chatted to him. I've chatted to him on Skype. He's, he's from my country. 
Oh well, from England. Um, and I didn't get to meet him. Uh, the, ver the first day, Panda was there talking to him apparently and I, I missed him. And I think every time he was around, I wasn't around. And every time I was around, he wasn't around. I think it was a case of we were just destined not to meet that trip. That's, uh, that was a shame because I would love to have, have, have chatted to him because I love wrestling. I, 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 I've been following wrestling since 1989. I think Survivor, Survivor Series 1989, uh, Zeus, when Zeus was there. Um, the all-powerful Zeus from No Holds Barred. That's when I started watching wrestling. I think yes, it was because I remember buying the the, the VHS tape. And I had the WrestleMania VHS tape. That was the first wrestling tape I bought. Ultimate Warrior vs Hulk Hogan. But going off topic there. And the panel. Then we had the panel. I think I think I've pretty much covered everybody I met. Um, oh, the Games Heroes. I forget the Games Heroes. Uh, two of the guys from the Games Heroes were there, and again, just genuinely nice guys. Just, just genuinely, just incredibly nice guys. Um, and then I met Mike Dodd, the Birdman, who I had talked to briefly on Skype, but never really had a full conversation with him. He's one of my new favorite people. He is just, he's, he's, he's so knowledgeable, so, and the man is a machine. The man is so busy and doing so much, and the fact that he could take time to just have a long conversation with me and a lot of long conversations. We had we had a lot of nice chats about video games in, in general because he's a he was a, he was he was, in a, he was fascinated by my screwdriver. I brought my Doctor Who Sonic screwdriver. Panda brought his, which is the Matt Smith one. Panda brought his David Tennant one, and Phelous brought brought his. I think it was the Peter Davidson one, which Linkara also had. So yeah, I mean, there was Sonic screwdrivers going off everywhere. There was a guy walking around dressed up as David Tennant. Um, one of the things at the show that we had as a running gag was just constantly going, I don't want to go! If anybody who's watched my David Tennant video will attest to the fact that I hate, I hate that, that line, I hate that exit. But yeah, that became like a, a running thing with us as well, and you've obviously seen the end of the uh, vlog now, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, the Birdman, the man is a machine, he literally, I mean, the, the Games Hero guys were the same as well, they recorded something and then one night when we were all drinking and having a good time, they are on the floor in the corner editing a trailer of the stuff they recorded that day. I, I did a challenge for Killer Instinct 2, which I have never played. I have played Killer Instinct 1, I have not played Killer Instinct 2, um, but in the arcade, and I've never played them in the arcade, and I got my ass royally handed to me in possibly what would be the worst ever match you will ever see two people play on Killer Instinct, uh, one or two, or any arcade game ever. It was bad. It was very, very bad. But fun. But really, really fun. And the panel itself, so that guy with the glasses panel. Oh, I am sitting next to Spoonie. It's like, you know, this is my first ever convention, this is my first ever panel, and I am sitting next to Spoonie, which I was really pleased about in one regard, because it meant I didn't have to follow Spoonie, that was Todd's, the honour of Todd to follow Spoonie. And it was, it was a lot of fun, because I had, I, I, I mean, I, I, I went to this convention, just wanted to have a good time, I didn't expect to get recognised, I didn't expect anybody to approach me, I didn't expect anything like that, and... Yeah, I you know I I didn't expect to get asked a question. We got asked a question. I think more out of uh, politeness than anything else. It was a guy, the guy who asked the question. I'd actually told to queue because the queue was so huge for that. I mean, it was it was, it was snaking. The queue was snaking. The room was jam packed. They wouldn't they wouldn't let any people in. They had to let people out to let people in. Type deal. Um, and there was two rows of us. There was um, I I. I Punky was, which I'm really pleased about, Punky was on the panel, Mike was on the panel, Kerbifer was on the panel from Team Four Star. Um, John was on the panel, KSD1 was on the panel, the Mount India guy, which I, which I liked, which I liked. He didn't know why he was there, um, but uh, I, I just liked the fact that he was on the panel. I think a lot of people were wondering why he was there, but again, a lot of people, uh, I just, I just... I just like the fact that he was there. I'm um, glad Matt was there too. A, a Paul Hack, Policy Hack. He was there, and in his costume as well, which was great. Uh, quite a, a lot of people didn't know him because well, his videos hadn't debuted yet. But I'm, it won't, won't be long before you know who he is. His videos are absolutely fantastic. Um, I, you know, I can't wait to see a fan base because he's got the forum fan base. 
but I can't wait to see that expand out because once I mean he 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 could very well take over the site as as the character pretty soon because of the stuff he does. Justin was fantastic because we did a we did a round uh, call where everybody sort of introduced themselves and uh, when Justin introduced himself the whole room exploded and started chanting J Dub. And Justin, the humble human being that he is, basically ran back and forth, sort of doing a, like a pump-up dance to the crowd, and it was great. And then he sort of noticed how humble he was about the whole thing, but then that is just, oh, it was fun. That was fun. And Nella, Nella got a huge cheer when she introduced herself, and then she actually rang Lindsay at one point, so we had Lindsay on the phone. <laughs> Lindsay couldn't be at the convention, so she was on the phone. This is all going to be in videos. Um... I can't remember. She asked. She actually asked. She she asked Nella to say something. I can't really remember. You'd have to watch the videos for that. But there was one point where Lin, where we rang her. Nella rang her, and Lindsay <laughs> said that she was driving while on the phone. It was illegal, and the fact that you know Lindsay and it just uh, she was saying hi. And it, it was it was that was that was good fun. That was really good fun. But the panel itself was was great. It was great. Um, I mean, we got asked a question. I didn't expect to get asked a question. And at the end of that, then we were allowed to take autographs and stuff. And I, I had been signing autographs through the day and pictures and a lot of things, which again surprised me. I didn't expect to do that. And it also made me realise I don't have an autograph or a signature that works well. I I, I think I, I, I autographed well over fifty things while I was there, including a picture of me, which was kinda of cool. But <laughs> everything everyone was different. I, I need to I need to work on a uh, we're gonna, we're gonna autograph. We're gonna an, an, an autograph that sticks. It's like uh, Justin's got one that sticks. Foodie's got one that sticks. And Carl's got one that sticks. Um, uh, Rosie, uh, pushing up roses, has got one that sticks. I, I really need to to find one that sticks. because yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bad. I'm sorry, guys, but I do seriously appreciate. Uh, I do appreciate you approaching me about that because again, I didn't expect that. Really didn't expect that. Very uh, humbling, Very humbling experience. So yeah, the panel was probably the most fun because we were all in one room. I mean, very rarely, just because of the hotel size as well, could we all be in the same place at the same time. And for that point, we were all together. It was just everybody together. We could all bounce off each other and play off each other. I abused that panda. And I offended Linkara about uh, making fun of K9 from Doctor Who. Linkara threw a bottle at me. I threatened to knock his hat off. We're just. It was a lot of fun. Liz had a great comment about uh, finding Lewis sexually attractive, which I will. Uh, <laughs> uh, her delivery of that, and I told her that her delivery of that was perfect. I hope that is in the one of the highlight videos if you get a chance to see. We were talking about uh, uh, fan fiction online, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was that was that was a definite highlight because of how deadpan she said it. But the panel was so much fun. And I honestly wish we could have gone longer. Um, we, we tried to incorporate a drinking game into it, but every time Spoonie or Lewis uh, asked a question, we would have to take a shot. We weren't allowed to drink, so I actually marked down how many times they were asked, and it came to about 36 uh, times in total, which is surprising, you know, surprising. It was actually well spread. Nella got a lot of questions. Um, Jessu got a lot of questions as well. Um, and Lee and Dina. How could I forget Lee and Dina? Oh. We've got Lee and Dina, meeting Lee and Dina. Dina was getting over the flu. Uh, God bless her, so I'm just really glad you know, they could make it out. Cause it, and Dina... Dina, I, I can honestly say, was, was was laughing to the point of nearly crying in pain because of Nash during that first night watching that film. Because I, I was sitting here filming it, and Lee was here and Dina was here, and I honestly, th I, I honestly thought she was going to start crying because she was laughing so hard at Nash. Ah. Uh, that was uh, that was so much fun. Um, it was it was an absolute blast. So you know, fun. I, I I'm very fortunate in I've been very fortunate in my life in that I have I've managed to travel. I've managed to get out of the UK and see the world. I spent I, I spent ten weeks in America doing a summer camp program, and got some friends there, met some people, have stayed in touch with those people and some of them are some of my closest friends who I have visited since. I was, um, I've got, I've got friends in uh, Connecticut and Pennsylvania, some of them, the counsellors, some of them the campers who obviously know a lot older. 
and you know, I, I had a great time doing that. I, I took a year out from uh, everything, I saved up my money, and went went to Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, again America, and again met so many wonderful people. And I've been there. I've been so I've been so lucky with that to, to, to be able to do that, and then to do this, to go to this convention with people who I know but have never met, and just have a blast with them. Yeah, just have an absolute blast with these people, and I'm sorry if there's anybody I've missed out. I'm really sorry. I'm racking my brains right now. I'm I'm I'm, I'm almost half asleep. Um, I wanted to do this while it's still fresh and while I can still, well, I can I can do it without out without it sounding like I'm just forcing it. I mean, uh, it is still very raw and very real for me at the minute. And it's just I I think it was kind of nice that it was Fails and Panda, who I did get on with the best, but I was rooming with them, and I do talk to them the most on Skype and we filmed a review together which it's either going to be very funny or a complete disaster but the good thing about that is I don't say much in it so it won't be my fault if it is that's uh, I'm just gonna pass the blame off to them right there hi guys but uh, no, it was nice that it was just us it was it was me John Fearless and Panda at the airport John drove us there thank you John Sincerely, thank you for that. Um, and then uh, Vale had to catch his plane after being jerked around by with the gates, and then Panda got to catch his one, and then I had to stick around for a bit to catch mine, which I, and I got to speak to my friend as well. So that uh, that managed to kill some time for me, and it was just nice to talk to her because she's the one. Well, she's one of the people I didn't see. She lives in DC, but she's in Atlanta at the minute. But you don't really care about that. Uh, but no, the. It was just a wonderful experience, um, very humbling, wonderful meeting these people, great, so much fun getting to talk to people who like the site. I didn't be, because I, I, I went there with the intention of not being recognised, with the intention of nobody knowing who I am. I was just looking forward to going to there and meeting people who enjoy the site. And seeing all these people who enjoy the site, seeing people dressed up as Doug, as Linkara, as the Bum, uh, it was oh, it was it was wonderful. It was wonderful. You know, just looking back on it now, it's just like I wish it could have. Well, you know, you said yeah. I, I if some people would have said they wish it could have, got, could have gone on longer. I think because of where we were, it was so tiring. And I wasn't even doing that much. I mean, Spoonie was Spoonie did four panels, well, four, four or five panels. So he must have been exhausted, you know. His panels are like one in the morning, and you know he was still like, chipper and friendly and funny and ah. Oh. And then I did the rock band thing where he I, I don't know what that song was, but uh, uh, yes. Um, when you see the video, so I'll say you'll know exactly what the song is when you see Spoonie singing it. Um, but uh, I, I, that's uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, I can't I, I can't honestly remember the name of the song. I started uh, buying memorabilia then, which sadly, if you've been following my tweets, you'll know was was stolen, um, which is which is a shame, which is a shame. But I was pretty angry about it at the time. If you read my tweet, but I'm, I'm not. I'm I'm more reserved about it now because it's just like at the end of the day, what I had there, you know, it can't take away from what I experienced. And just like meeting everybody, and I was like, I can remember, you know, obviously I forgot. If I have forgotten people, I'm sorry. I, I am really sorry, but I can literally remember meeting everybody. You know, the first time I saw them, I can remember meeting, you know, Jason, I, uh, Lord Cat. I can remember meeting Looper. I can remember meeting Kalen. I can remember meeting uh, some of the fans as well. Like uh, Mike Insanity approached me for for a, an interview. The Games Hero guys. Uh, I remember seeing Freya in the queue, um, waiting to get a pass. I remember seeing Punky for the first time when she just ran over and hugged everybody. I can remember meeting Sean, meeting Justin, who is just generally one of the nicest, most sincere guys you could ever meet. Um, Paul, Rosie, Todd, you know, Todd Shadows, Shadow Todd. Um, Nella, Jessu, who gave me two hugs because I had such a long flight. She was like, you know, can you sign my shirt? You got, a, and she gave me a huge hug, and she said, "You got a long flight ahead of you." And I went, "No, oh, about eight hours." She said, "You deserve another hug," and she gave me another hug. Girl is so nice. Oh. But no, 
truly was just a great week. Just a great week. And while I wouldn't have wanted the convention to continue because it was tiring, based on just what you were, you, you just like if you were either in your room or you were downstairs. And if you were in your room, you could chill. If you were downstairs, you were because there was so much going on. It's the same thing. I wasn't, you know, I mean, Lewis was uh, bombarded with people, which naturally he would be Kalen, Spoonie, guys who were just so, you know, recognizable from the site who'd been there a while. Uh, they were being uh, bombarded and, you know, it was just fun to just meet meet the fans, just meet people and talk to them. Just talk to them about stuff I like, uh, Doctor Who, uh, video games, just things in general. Just just things in general, really. That was just fun to do that. And I, I never got to the point where I wanted to walk away from a fan. You know, it was more a case of, you know, you, I, I wanted to go somewhere else sort of thing. It was never a case of hi, bye. You know, I, I, I was happy to talk to as many people as I could because... You know, we're all geeks. We're all there because we're geeks. We're all the same, and uh, it's it's just fun talking to people like that. It's, it's it's fun doing it without a Skype window or without a comment section. So you know, people if they agree or disagree with you, you can do it face to face. A guy came over to us after the pan came up to me after the panel, and we had to talk about Rose. A nice tall guy he was wearing a hat. Uh, I don't know your name, sorry man, but uh, I signed something for you. You were wearing a black hat and a uh, dark clothes. And we had a discussion about Rose, and that was great. That's great because it's like there's no, you know, we can bounce things off each other. And like I say in my videos, I respect everyone's opinion. I just state my own. And it's the same thing there, face to face, and that's, that's so much more fun. It is so much more fun. It's something that obviously the internet takes away a little bit, but gives us as well. Because if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't have been at this convention. If it wasn't for the internet, I have a phone call. Ooh, and a tweet. Just for the benefit of this be lie, I'm actually going to see who said what. Mikey J. No, you can't see that. It's a shame. Mikey J who couldn't go, which is a shame. I'd like to if Mike could have gone. I'd like to if any other Brits had gone. It would have been quite fun to uh, fly over with them. And something else you don't need to know about. It involves people I work with in my real life job. But, thinking about it just like for me, I'm a fan, first. What I do with the videos is my hobby, and I'm a fan of the website, and I've been a fan of the website since it started. You know, since, since, since Doug broke away from YouTube and started that website, I, I was obviously a fan of the critic before that, but I was a fan of the website then. And now to be on the website and to be on a panel, as as recognized talent, which, in honest to God, I never ever ever thought would happen. Um, to the point, mainly because I just didn't have anything that I, I felt was worth going on site. And sometimes I don't. I still think I don't have anything that's worth going on site. I'm just very fortunate. I am very very fortunate with what I've done and what I do. And you know. I'm a fan, and I'm one of the biggest fans. I'm not going to say I'm the number one fan. That's a cliche. That's a, but I'm certainly one of the biggest fans. I'm not a blind fan. You know, I can, I can, I can easily turn around and say, you know, well, that wasn't good. That video wasn't funny. Uh, that, that went on too long. You know, I'll, I'll happily critique. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a blinded fanboy. But yeah, to be a as big a fan as I am, and to be sitting. In Atlanta, in a hotel, on a panel, with some of the funniest people on the internet and some of the nicest people I've ever met. Yeah, that's uh. That's that's uh. That's, that's something, uh, something I won't forget for a while. Yeah. Anyway, this has gone on a bit too long. Uh, thanks for listening. If you haven't made it all the way through, I completely understand that. But, uh, yeah, so, I've got nothing really much else to say except thank you to everybody. Thank you to you guys from the website. Thank you for every single person from the website for making that weekend, well, week, actually, making the week so fun. And thank you to the fans, because if, if I know it sounds a cliche thing to say, but if it wasn't for you, 
that wouldn't have happened. None of us would have been there. I wouldn't have been there. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I can say.